week one is upon us. And with that being said, I thought I'd give you guys my week one power rankings. Now things are subject to change. There will be an episode coming out every week. So there's going to be a lot of movement throughout this season. But this is just what I think the teams are going to be in the beginning of the season. If you don't like where your team's at to begin the season, just know that if they win games and they play good, they're going to rise up my rankings. So before you go in the comments saying, oh, why is my team so low? Or, oh, you're so low on my team. Just know that if they win games and prove me wrong, I'll have them higher. And with that being said, let's get into it. All right, starting at number 32, we got the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I think it's a bit of a consensus that the Cardinals are at least starting off this season at the bottom of the list. In almost every power rankings I see, that's the case. And it's really just because they're in sort of a rebuild and their star quarterback is out with injury. And if I was them, I would keep Kyler Murray out for the whole season. Now, the reports are that he's going to miss about six weeks, maybe come back after the bye week. But if they're in a rebuild, just tank for that number one pick and then figure out if you want Caleb Williams or if you want to keep Kyler Murray. I just see no reason in rushing Kyler Murray back because if you are looking to trade him, if you get the number one pick, you don't want to risk injury with him. And as far as the rest of the team goes, talent is few and far between. You got James Conner at running back, which he's always a bit average. You do got the deep threat in Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown. Uh, You got just aging veterans and Zach Ertz. The offensive line isn't anything special besides Paris Johnson. And on the defense, the defense is ugly. You got a few young stars in BJ Ujolari, Garrett Williams, who I really like coming out of the draft, but I believe he tore his ACL early on in the season. You got Buda Baker, who is kind of requesting a trade. You know, you don't know if you're going to keep him or not. And then the rest is just bad. So you're going have one of the bottom defenses you got Joshua Dobbs who you traded for being your starting quarterback along with a rookie quarterback and Clayton Toon backing him up I just don't see how this team can finish more than two to three wins if that if Kyler Murray comes back maybe four or five but if Kyler Murray stays out the whole season I don't see you guys winning more than two games sorry Cardinals fans moving on to number 31 we have the Houston Texans now this team is led by a rookie quarterback and CJ Stroud and the thing about the Texans is they don't really have many weapons for CJ Stroud to throw to I mean they have Nico Collins as their number one receiver and he hasn't had anywhere near a wide receiver one type of season you got an aging veteran in Robert Woods you got Noah Brown and then you got a few rookies and Tank Dill John Mechie who it's his first season he's not a rookie he was battling leukemia and he had a torn ACL and then you guys also got Xavier Hutchinson so you got a young wide receiver core but I don't think anyone on this team right now has a potential to be a number one receiver you have Dalton Schultz who I really like the pickup your offensive line is decent you got Larry Tunsil Josh Jones is decent Jarrett Patterson I like coming out of college but I don't know how he's gonna fare in the NFL Shaq Mason you guys got moving on to the defense you guys got Will Anderson, who you guys drafted early on in the draft. Other than that, you got Derek Stanley, who I expect a big leap from. Jimmy Ward, Jalen Petrie, I really like. But overall, your defense isn't great. You got a who I think is a decent quarterback in C.J. Stroud, but he has no one to really throw it to right now. You guys are going to have to rely on the run a lot and Damian Pierce. I don't know if he's going to be that guy to really win you games. So I don't see you guys winning more than... Again, just like the Cardinals, three or four games. But I think you guys are setting yourselves up for a really good future with C.J. Stroud, as long as you guys get him a number one target. Moving on to number 30, I do have the Los Angeles Rams. Now, I think they're in a bit of a weird situation where they have a really, really top-heavy team. You guys got proven stars in Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, Aaron Donald. But other than that, this team is pitiful. I mean, you guys got Cam Akers, who the Rams seem to hate. I don't understand that. You got Van Jefferson. And by the way, Cooper Cup isn't going to be playing week one. That's another reason why I got him so low this week. And he has to pick up Steve Avila. You guys got a bunch of rookies, middle of the draft rookies. Um, This team just needs to go into a full rebuild. And I think after this season, they will. Because I don't think you guys are going to have Stafford Cup or Aaron Donald for much longer. So really... If I was a Rams fan, I would just be hoping for an early pick. Moving on to number 29, I do have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I'm just not a believer in Baker Mayfield. I don't think he's a starting caliber quarterback. Other than that, you guys got some pretty good players. You guys got Mike Evans, who is kind of requesting a trade. You guys got uh, Chris Godwin. Rashad White, I really like. I think he's going to get a lot of touches to kind of relieve Baker Mayfield. Your offensive line isn't 
terrible. I mean, you guys got Tristan Wirfs. And you also got Cody Mock, who I really liked in the draft. Moving to defense, you guys drafted Kalaja Kansi in the first round. Vita Vea, Devin White, Levante David, Shaq Barrett. You guys got a lot of top-heavy players. But if your quarterback position isn't up to par, you guys aren't going to win a lot of games. No matter how good your defense seems on paper. Moving to 28, we have the Indianapolis Colts. And this is another team with a rookie quarterback in Anthony Richardson. And I do think he's the most unpolished rookie quarterback in the league right now. But the difference between him and C.J. Stroud is Anthony Richardson does have a decent target to throw to in Michael Pittman and you also has got rookie receiver Josh Downs along with Alec Pierce who had a good rookie season last year and they also have a pretty good offensive line besides Bernard Ryman I'm not a huge fan of him or Will Fries and then on defense you guys got a, a few decent players in Shaq Leonard, DeForest Buckner, Grover Stewart you guys got a really good defensive line and I think your defense could win you guys some games as long as Anthony Richardson holds on to the ball and doesn't make many boneheaded plays. And number 27 is where I decided to put the Panthers. And just like the Colts and Texans, they got another rookie quarterback in Bryce Young, who I think was the best quarterback in the draft. And they also got him a few decent targets, I guess, and a veteran Adam Thielen, DJ Chark, who looked pretty good, Jonathan Mingo, who I really like coming out of the draft. Now, the big question with them, though, is their offensive line. In the preseason, at least, their offensive line looked atrocious. Iki Aquanu is, based on the preseason, is looking terrible. Now, Come in the regular season, he could, you know, turn it around. Who knows? And besides that, their offensive line is terrible. Taylor Moonton, Chandler Zavala, Bradley Bozeman. I mean, their offensive line is just not great. And their defense is decent. Nothing crazy. I really like J.C. Horn. I think he's going to take that step into, like, top tier cornerback level and then you guys got a few good safeties brian burns who's looking for a contract Derek brown i also like so your defense can keep you in games the question is going to be is if bryce young and that offense can kind of win you games next up are the chicago bears at number 26 and this is a make or break season for justin fields they finally got him some good targets and dj moore Darnell Mooney still there, Chase Claypool, Cole Komet. So Justin Fields has the target. He has that number one receiver that he hasn't had since he's been drafted to the league. And then they got Khalil Herbert, Deontay Foreman, Roshan Johnson as their running backs. Their offensive line is decent, nothing crazy, but it's decent. Their defense is pretty good. They spent a lot of money on their linebackers with TJ Edwards and Tremaine Edmonds. They also got Jalen Johnson, who I think is a really underrated cornerback. Kyler Gordon's looking to take that next step, and I think he might. And then their safeties are pretty decent. So the big question with the Bears is if Justin Fields is going to figure it out and be a little bit more than that rushing quarterback and be more of that passing quarterback. Now, at 25, I do have the Tennessee Titans, and they went out and got DeAndre Hopkins, another target for Ryan Tannehill. Derrick Henry, they still have. They have Traylon Burks, who's going to probably take that next step, hopefully. So their offense is decent. They're kind of in that same spot where they're probably not good enough to really compete, but their team looks like they're trying to compete. Their offensive line, they picked up Peter Skaronsky, who I really like. They got Andre Dillard as well. So their offense is probably going to be about the same as it's always been, you know, Pretty good, but not good enough, especially with Ryan Tannehill as their quarterback. I'm not a huge fan of him, but they don't really have much backing them up either. And Malik Willis and Will Levis, neither of them I was a fan of. Uh, moving on to defense, they got Jeffrey Simmons, who I really like. He's kind of been their leader on defense for a while now. Kevin Byer at safety as well. I think this is probably going to be just another season of the Titans being pretty good, not good enough. Yeah, and that's about it. At number 24, I do have the New England Patriots, and I'm expecting a bit of a bounce back season from Mac Jones. You know, nothing crazy, but you can't be much worse than you were last season. Uh, the Patriots actually got a decent offensive coordinator in there this year, and they picked up Ezekiel Elliott, so that's going to be a nice two-headed monster with Ramondre Stevenson and Ezekiel Elliott. Juju Smith-Schuster is their number one target, which I don't know if he's good enough to be a number one target on a good team, but they also got Devontae Parker, Kendrick Bourne. Uh, they drafted Keishon Boutte in the later rounds of the draft, who I think kind of got a little overlooked in the draft. Hunter Henry, Mike Isecki, they got good tight ends. Their offensive line is is pretty good. I like Trent Brown a little bit. Cole Strange, who looked like a reach at the time, but has been playing decent. Over on defense, they got Kyle Duggar, who I really like. Uh, Matthew Judon's always going to be a good defensive lineman. And they also picked up Christian Gonzalez, who I think was a steal in the draft. I don't know how he fell that far. But I just don't know if they got that firepower on offense to really win many games. You know, Mac Jones, I'm not a believer in him. I just think he's going to be a bit better than he was last season. So overall, I'd be surprised if they made any noise 
and I don't think they're going to make the playoffs either. At number 23, I have the Green Bay Packers, and they're kicking off a new era without Aaron Rodgers as their quarterback, and they have Jordan Love, who looked pretty good in the preseason. They got two good young receivers in Christian Wood and Romeo Dubs. I really like Romeo Dubs a lot. Uh, they also drafted Jaden Reed from Michigan State. They still got the two-headed monster in Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, who's always going to be that kind of safety blanket for Jordan Love. They drafted the two tight ends, Luke Musgrave, Tucker Craft. David Bakhtiari is good when he's on the field. It's just that he's a bit older in age and is kind of injury prone at this point. Ellen Jenkins, Josh Myers, John Runyon, uh, Zach Tom. I mean, really, if they don't have Bakhtiari and he gets injured or maybe gets traded to the Jets, who knows, then their offensive line will be in trouble. Kenny Clark on defense is one of the better interior defensive linemen in the league. Devondre Campbell had a really good season. Quay Walker, as long as he doesn't get kicked out of games, he's good. Rashawn Gary's a monster on the edge. Jair Alexander, I think, is one of the best corners in the league. Their safeties probably could use a little bit of help, but I think their defense is going to be good enough to keep them in games and maybe even win them a few games. Jordan Love is really the big question mark here. If he can kind of be as good as some people think he can be, including me, I think the Packers do have a chance to win that division, but I still think it's probably the Lions division, and we'll get to the Lions a little bit later in this video because I am pretty high on the Lions. Moving on to number 22, I do have the Washington Commanders, and the big question with them also is their quarterback situation with Sam Howell. He was driving Drafted in, I believe, the fifth round, which he did fall a bit. I do think he's better than a fifth-round quarterback. Brian Robinson, Antonio Gibson, they got a decent running back duo. Terry McLaurin has seemed to be productive no matter who his quarterback is. So their offense is decent to above average. Their defense is their defensive line is always great, especially if Chase Young comes back and shows why he was a former top what three pick. Their secondary and their linebacking core could use some help. Is a bit iffy. But they did try to help that out by boosting it up with Emmanuel Forbes, who they drafted in the first round. I think they're probably going to finish in the bottom of the NFC East, but I still think they're going to be a pretty good quarterback and probably contending for a playoff spot, if we're being honest. I do have the Raiders here at number 21, and the big question is Jimmy Garoppolo. He's kind of been battling health. Josh Jacobs finally did sign that deal. They still got Devontae Adams. So I think they're about the same team as they were last season. I mean, they swapped out mid quarterbacks they got they took out Derek Carr got Jimmy Garoppolo they're on the same level in my opinion so I think they didn't really get much better but they also didn't get much worse either in the offseason so I think it's just gonna be a typical season from the Las Vegas Raiders now I might be a little bit lower on this team but I do have the Steelers here at 20 now Kenny Pickett granted was the preseason he looked amazing he looked like he's gonna take that next step but we got to see what he looks like in regular season action Najee Harris is you know, he's Najee Harris. He's nothing special in my opinion. George Pickens looks like the next best receiver in Pittsburgh. Pat Farmuth is always going to be that safety blanket at tight end. Their offensive line needs some work. They did work on it while getting Broderick Jones in the draft. Their defense are going to have a fully healthy uh, TJ Watt, who is a former defensive player of the year. Alex Highsmith, some people think he's going to take that next step. I'm not too sure about it. They drafted Joey Porter in the beginning of the second round, who I'm a huge fan of. I think that was a big steal. And then they still got Cameron Hayward, so their defense is, I think, solid to above average, and their offense is also solid to above average. So I think they will be fighting for a playoff spot in the AFC this coming season. At number 19, I do have the Atlanta Falcons, and... With Arthur Smith being their head coach, they are going to run the damn ball. And with B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier, I think they're going to have pretty good success with that. All Desmond Ritter really needs to do is not lose them games. I mean, he has Drake London to throw to. He's got Kyle Pitts, the versatile weapon. So, I mean, I think this team is going to be a lot better than most people think. I am kind of tempering my expectations. I did want to put them a lot higher than 19, but I'm going to have to see how they play first. And they're probably going to be big risers as the season goes along. Their defense is improved but not great by any means they got Calias Campbell who they who they uh picked up in the offseason Grady Jarrett's still on the team AJ Terrell I think is gonna have a bounce back season because he didn't look great last season and they also got Jesse Bates they drafted Jeff Okuda who they kind of took a flyer on who if he pans out he pans out if he doesn't oh well so I think the Atlanta Falcons can be better than a lot of people think but I'm kind of trying to temper my expectations for now at number 18, I do have the Denver Broncos, and I think with Sean Payton, their head coach, I think he's going to turn this team around just a bit. I don't think Russell Wilson can be much worse than he was last season. I mean, he's still Russell Wilson, so I, I'm still keeping faith in him. 
Javante Williams is a monster coming back from injury. Jerry Judy's always pretty solid, although he is questionable, I'm pretty sure, for week one. Their offensive line is, you know, they're not going to be the reason they lose games, in my opinion. They picked up Frank Clark on defense. They got Zach Allen. Their defense is kind of questionable, but the real question is if Russell Wilson can turn it around, and I think Sean Payton can get the best out of Russell Wilson. So I could see them competing for a playoff spot this season, but it's going to be iffy. Moving on to number 17, I do have the Minnesota Vikings. And they won a lot of close games last year. And I just think that's hard to uh, replicate. And their defense still isn't great. They do have Blanc Flores as their defensive coordinator. So they're going to be a blitz-happy team. But they're still... The talent's not there on defense, no matter how good your defensive coordinator is. If you don't got talent on the defense, it's just not going to work out. And I think Justin Jefferson is going to have another historical season, but they're just not built to be a playoff contender or sorry, Super Bowl contender. I do think they have a chance to make the playoffs, but just like last season, I don't think they're going to be able to do much in the playoffs. Moving on to number 16, I do have the New Orleans Saints and they improved their quarterback situation with Derek Carr. They also have Chris Olave, who I think is going to be a really good number one receiver for him. Rashid Shaheed, I'm a big fan of as well. They got A.T. Perry in the draft, who I really liked. You know, defense, they've got great players in Marshawn Lattimore, Tyron Matthew, uh, Demario Davis, Cameron Jordan. So I think they're going to be an improved team, and I do think they're going to make the playoffs, but I think they're going to just sneak in, in my opinion. Moving on to number 15, we have my favorite football team, the New York Giants. And I think people are a bit lower on the Giants than they should be. Now, I'm trying to put my bias to side. That's why I do have them at 15, but I just think they're an improved team. They have a really tough schedule, but they got they picked up Darren Waller for Daniel Jones to be his number one target. Saquon Barkley's still going to be there. Their defense got better with the trade of Isaiah Simmons. They got Bobby Okereke. They drafted really good with Deontay Banks. Trey Hawkins looks like he's going to be a really good steal in the draft, kind of be like that Tariq Woolen of this year's draft, hopefully. So I think they're going to be a lot better than most people think, but I am just like the Falcons are going to temper my expectations just because I am a Giants fan. Moving on to number 14, I do have the Seattle Seahawks. The question is if Geno Smith is actually a good quarterback or if that was a fluke season. I think it was a mixture of both. I don't think he's going to have as good of a season, but I still think he's going to be good enough to bring the Seahawks to the playoffs. I mean, they have just amazing receivers, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. They picked up JSN in the draft, who's going to be ready for week one, I'm pretty sure, following his wrist injury. Their offensive line isn't going to kind of lose them games, and as far as their defense goes... They got Tariq Woolen, who, again, I just spoke on. It was kind of like the steal of the draft, in my opinion. They got good safeties. They picked up Devin Witherspoon to be alongside Tariq Woolen. They brought back Bobby Wagner. So they got a bit of the Legion of Boom still on their team with Bobby Wagner. And so the only question with them is their pass rush. I don't think they're going to have great pass rush, but I think their offense is just going to put up points. Like, they got a great run game with Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet, and they got great receivers. So... I don't see how their offense could be bad, barring any injuries. So their defense can really just be as bad as they want. I think they're just going to outscore teams. At number 13, I do have the Detroit Lions. And they drafted Jameer Gibbs at the running back position. And I'm just a huge fan of Jameer Gibbs. I think he's going to have a great season. Amon Ross St. Brown showed that he can be a number one target. They do have Jamison Williams, who's suspended for the first six games. But once he comes back, he's going to be their deep threat. They got Sam Laporta, who I think is going to be a really good tight end. He's great after the catch. Their offensive line is really good. Their defense, they got Aiden Hutchinson coming into a second season. Aleem McNeil. They drafted Jack Campbell. I just think their offense is going to be just amazing. Uh, who Their offensive coordinator's name is slipping my mind. Is it Ben Johnson? I think it's Ben Johnson. He's a great offensive coordinator. I think he's going to get a head coaching gig next season if he kind of replicates the offense that he had last season. And this is my pick to win the NFC North. Now, I think it's going to be a close race between the Vikings and the Packers. So... I don't think the Bears are really going to be in this conversation, but I think it's kind of up in the air, but I think the Detroit Lions are kind of edging themselves out as the favorite, at least to begin the season. Coming in at number 12, I do have the Cleveland Browns, and this division is stacked, but I do think they might sneak into the playoffs. I mean, I think Deshaun Watson's going to have a bounce back season. I don't think he's going to be that Houston Texans quarterback that he once was, but I think he's going to have a better season now that he's kind of knocked the rust off. They got Nick Chubb, who's the best running back in the league, in my opinion. They got a great number one receiver in Amari Cooper. Their offensive line is amazing. 
They got one of the best defensive players in the league in Miles Garrett. They got Dalvin Tomlinson. They picked up Zadarius Smith to rush the quarterback alongside Miles Garrett. So I think as long as Deshaun Watson has a good season, I think they're going to be a playoff team. At number 11, I do have the Chargers. And I think Justin Herbert's going to have a really good season. I mean, he's got he's finally got that deep threat in Quentin Johnston. He's also got Mike Williams, Keenan Allen. Their offensive line is good. And then their defense, they got Khalil Mack, who's a bit old, older now, but I still think he's solid. They got Eric Kendricks, Joey Bosa, who's brother just signed a massive deal but Joey Bosa is also very solid Derwin James they got so I think they got a good defense they got a really good offense with Justin Herbert and I think they're going to make some noise in the AFC moving into my top 10 at number 10 I do have the Miami Dolphins and the big question with them also is if Tua Tungavailoa can stay healthy he had a big problem with concussions last season but if he can stay healthy they have really good receivers in Tyree Kill Jalen Waddle I think they have the best wide receiver duo in the league they also have a decent offensive line as long as Teron Armstead stays healthy which is a big if and their defense is one of the best in the league so I think they're gonna have an electric offense to go along with a good defense so that spells Super Bowl contender for me at number nine I do have the Jacksonville Jaguars and I think Trevor Lawrence is gonna be in MVP conversations with them bringing in Calvin Ridley Christian Kirk was already a really good receiver Evan Ingram has kind of turned it around since leaving New York their offensive line is decent they picked up Anton Harrison who I wasn't a big fan of but He's going to be starting at right tackle. And their defense is decent, but it's not really an elite defense. They got Trayvon Walker, the former number one overall pick. They got Devin Lloyd. Josh Allen's a good edge rusher for him. So I just think as long as Trevor Lawrence has a really good season, which I think he will, they're going to be a really good team in the NFC. And I do think they're going to be the best team in the AFC South. And I think they're going to do pretty good in the playoffs. Coming in at number eight, I do have the New York Jets, and they got newly acquired Aaron Rodgers, and I think people forget that Aaron Rodgers was a back-to-back MVP not too long ago. He did have a down year last season, but he had one foot out the door in Green Bay, in my opinion. So I think Aaron Rodgers is the same Aaron Rodgers of old. He's got Garrett Wilson, who even he said is kind of like a mini Devontae Adams. He made the Jets bring in Alan Lazard, and he's got McCole Hardman. Their offensive line is kind of hanging on by a thread as long as they all stay healthy which is a big if I think they have a solid offensive line but I think that's probably their weakest point on the team because their defense is just amazing they have Sauce Gardner one of the best cornerbacks in the league they have Quentin Williams one of the best defensive linemen in the league so I think this team is going to surprise a lot of people and be one of the better teams in the AFC even though the AFC is so stacked moving on to number seven I do have the Dallas Cowboys and the Cowboys seem to do good almost every regular season now when it gets to the playoffs that's when it's kind of up in the air But I think they're going to be a really good uh, regular season team. They got a good offense in Tony Pollard. They got a great number one receiver in C.D. Lamb. I love C.D. Lamb. They brought in Brandon Cooks in the offseason to be that number one, or sorry, number two target. They did lose Dalton Schultz, and their tight end group isn't looking great. But their offensive line is good. The Dallas Cowboys offensive line is always good. And on defense, they got Michael Parsons, one of the best defensive players in the league. Probably is going to be in contention for Defensive Player of the Year this year. They also brought in Stephon Gilmore. So they had a really good offseason. They brought in two really good players in Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks. So I don't see a reason why they won't be a good regular season team. I mean, the big question is if Dak Prescott's going to limit the turnovers this season. And I think he will, especially since he's got two really good uh, wide receivers. And moving on to number six, I do have the Baltimore Ravens. And as long as Lamar Jackson stays healthy, this team looks to be one of the best teams in the league. Now, I don't want to say Lamar Jackson is injury prone because they have been kind of quote unquote freak injuries, but he does got to prove that he can stay healthy for a whole season. And if he does, they got a great roster. They got J.K. Dobbins at running back, Rashad Bateman, Odell, Zay Flowers. They got a good receiving core. They got Lamar Jackson's favorite target, Mark Andrews, who's a top three tight end in the league. Their offensive line is good, and their defense is also solid. The only question I do have is in their secondary. Their cornerbacks, especially if Marlon Humphrey's out, I don't see how they're going to be able to cover really anybody. But besides that, they're just a really solid team all around. And as long as Lamar Jackson stays healthy, they have a chance to be 
playoff contenders, if not Super Bowl contenders. And at number five, I do have the San Francisco 49ers, and I think this is where the Super Bowl contenders really start to kick in. If it wasn't for their completely terrible luck at quarterback last season, I think the 49ers had just as good of a chance as anyone to make the Super Bowl. And when they faced off against the Eagles in the NFC Championship, they had no quarterback, so who knows what would have happened if Brock Purdy stayed healthy that game. But moving on to this season, they have one of the most complete rosters in the league. The only question is the quarterback. Now, I'm a Brock Purdy believer, but I'm not crazy. Like, I know he's not going to really win you games, but he's going to play his role. He's just going to be that game manager, and he's going to let Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, guys like that, George Kittle, people like them to just win the games. And their defense is also really good. They got Javon Hargrave. They took him from the Eagles. They got Eric Armstead still. They got Nick Bosa, who just got a massive contract, like I said earlier. I mean, they just have a really complete roster, and I think Brock Purdy is the perfect guy. They don't need that Patrick Mahomes, although that would be nice, obviously, but this team is built for just a decent quarterback to come in, play his role, and and win the team games, and that's what I think they're going to do. And at number four, I have the Buffalo Bills. Now, they got one of the best quarterbacks in the league in Josh Allen and one of the best receivers in Stephon Diggs. This team is dynamic on offense, as it's been for the past few years. And their defense is also nothing to scoff at. They got Greg Rousseau, Ed Oliver, Leonard Floyd, who they picked up. They got a really good defensive line to go along with good linebackers. And the secondary is also really good with Tredavious White, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde. So I think any team that has Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs on offense is going to be really good. They also got a really dynamic tight end duo with Dawson Knox and Dalton Kincaid. So I like the Bills' chances to be one of the top contenders in the AFC and moving on to the top three my third team is the Cincinnati Bengals now this team is my pick to win the Super Bowl but I do have them at three right now just because Joe Burrow is coming off that injury that he suffered in training camp so I think it's going to take him a little bit of time to settle in he didn't really have that much of a training camp to begin with but they have Joe Mixon Jamar Chase is one of the best receivers in the league D Higgins is even one of the best receivers in the league And then they also got a third really good receiver in Tyler Boyd. Their offensive line is always kind of a question with them. Jonah Williams and Orlando Brown, I'm pretty decent fans of. But the interior of the offensive line is a little sketchy in my opinion. And then on defense, they got the big boy DJ Reader to kind of clog up the middle. They got Trey Hendrickson coming off the edge. Their linebacking duo is pretty good. And then their secondary is a bit sketchy, but I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue. So yeah, I mean, Joe Burrow is my pick to win MVP. The Bengals are my pick to win the Super Bowl. So that's kind of why I have them at three. You're lucky I didn't put them at one, but I got to respect the other two teams that are coming up. And at number two, I do have the Philadelphia Eagles, and they made it to the Super Bowl for a reason. They have a really good offense, a really good quarterback, good offensive line, the best offensive line in the league, in my opinion. Their defense is insane. They lost a few players or actually they kind of lost a lot of players they lost guys like Kazir White, TJ Edwards, Javon Hargrave, and CJ Gardner Johnson but they've either had backup players that are ready to fill that role or they address it in the draft and the free agency they brought in Jalen Carter through the draft who God, somehow fell to him the Kobe Dean was the backup linebacker last year and I think he's going to fill that role pretty nicely and they also brought in Terrell Edmonds to replace CJ Gardner Johnson so they replaced all their holes that they did kind of make and when you have one of the best wide receiver duos in the league and a quarterback like Jalen Hurts you guys are going to be a good team and they didn't really get worse but I also don't think they got much better either but they made the Super Bowl so I got to respect that and put them at number two. And at number one, to nobody's surprise, I do have Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I'm always going to have them at one or anyone who won the Super Bowl at one to start the season until they prove me otherwise. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league. They have questions at receiver for sure, but they also have Travis Kelsey who is going to miss this first game. So they are going to need to figure out who is going to be their wide receivers. I mean, really, they have Kadarius Tooney, Marquez Valdez-Scatling, Sky Moore, Rasheed Rice, all of those guys could be contributors. So it's really dependent on who is actually going to take that step because they have a lot of first and second year players. So it's kind of up in the air on that end. But when you have a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes, it makes life a lot easier. They also brought in veteran Jawan Taylor. They also brought in Donovan Smith from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The interior of their line is decent. So it's really going to be on those tackles to see how they mesh and 
I have confidence that they're going to kind of fit in pretty nicely. And on defense, they have a lot of young talent. Guys like Trent McDuffie, Derek Nottie, George Karloftis. Now, they are going to be without Chris Jones for what seems like going to be up until the trade deadline. So that's going to be a big hit to their defense. But I have faith that they're not going to lose games because of their defense. And when you have Patrick Mahomes on the other side of the ball, it's going to be hard to lose games. Let me just say that. So those are my week one power rankings. Now, obviously, teams that are higher up in my rankings are going to fall. Teams that are lower in my rankings are going to rise throughout the season. This is just what the rankings are and what I believe they're going to be to begin the season. There's going to be a lot of movement up and down each week. But let me know what you guys think of my rankings so far. And if you like the video, please give it a like. And if you like the channel, please consider subscribing. And as always, this is the Draft Nerd, and thanks for watching.